It's ten past six before work and I currently want to die. Well, I would try like one of these vloggy things today. So I'm gonna go to work. I'm gonna launch my horse before work actually starts because technically it starts at eight. Also I walk everywhere so not fun. Got my dog. Life is good. It is now ten to seven. Um, I've just, well I haven't got to the yard but I'm on like our sort of our land. I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to lunge Cordy, ride Lacey, ride Jack, possibly ride Finley unless Sam wants to do it and then Sam can ride him. It's gonna be a busy one I think because obviously I'm working today so I need to get there. I don't need to feed because I've just seen Victoria one of our liveries. And she's just told me that she's fed all the horses, which makes my life so much easier, you don't understand. Um, Hello! Come on! Hi! Alfie? Hey! Look at me! Alfie! Here's Lace. Good morning! Oh, look at you. You were clean yesterday, kind of. Interesting behaviour from you today. No badness to report. He's quite huge, this horse, and he can be a bit of a shit to lead to and from the field. He's very sweet, really, but he's a fucking pain in the ass sometimes. So I'm now walking back from turning out to Wexford and Durang, and it's really depressing turning them out because they're like all the way back there. Um, they're the furthest field from the yard at the moment, which is really depressing because it's such a long walk and it takes up so much time and I like to try and get done quite quickly sometimes, but that never happens when you have horses to turn away out that like 50 years away from the yard. I have two more trips to do, so that's my pony and Bucks and then Lady and Rosie and there is Cordy finishing his morning wee because he actually won't pee in his stable not that I'm complaining because it makes my life easier that's his best buddy Bucks and they love each other Dear me, it's okay to shed a tear once in a while All these moments spent with her stretch on for miles You've been through this hell and lived to tell the tale Hold on tight, your story's waiting to set sail Dear me, I'm coming undone Feel the ground beneath my feet Begin to crumble to the sound of the ensemble in our dreams Dear me, I'm put into rest I'll never let you slip away The thought of you will never fade as long as you're around me
dear me It's okay to shed a tear once in a while All these moments spent with her stretch on for miles You've been through this hell and lived to tell the tale Hold on tight, your story's waiting to set sail Dear me, I'm coming undone I feel the ground beneath my feet Begin to crumble to the sound of the ensemble in our dreams Dear me, I'm putting... So I've just ridden Jack um, And now I'm going to get on Finley I'm getting so tired But then I still have one, maybe two more to ride And one to lunge or long rain um, and then obviously I've got to bring in all the horses and stuff for the afternoon, hay feed and all that jazz. Um, but yeah, I'm fucking knackered. Jack was really good. Um, he's quite long. He's he's big, big lump. You alright, Alfie? He's like a big lump. So I was just doing lots of like transitions to sort of like step him into his back legs, if that makes sense. Um, just because I don't want to be riding with such like a backward feel and. I'm getting there, but uh, it's not quite there yet. I I am. I am learning, though. I'm learning. So, yeah. So, now I'm going to ride Finley. Finley. Finley's hilarious. He's such a brat. He's probably one of my favourite horses in the world, but he's a fucking loser. <laughs> what I was aiming to achieve on Finley, but didn't, was just rolling him back onto his back legs a little bit more. He's had like some time off and stuff because he had a sarcoid between his back legs and he wanted to kill us every time we touched him and it was like all very understandable because it had been pretty traumatic for him. So I was just trying to start like doing that and he does like this hop thing and in in, like into a transition when he's doing beforehand and I was like in my brain I was just like eliminate the hop, eliminate the hop, eliminate the hop but it, there's only so much I can do when he like bounces into this like rubber ball and just like ricochets everywhere because he's scared of a fucking digger <laughs> Yeah.
speak inappropriately for some recording. I hope Carpe spooks again. Come on, donkey. You stay dirty. Is this in case she sits on the floor again? <laughs> Lacey can trot over poles. Oh, you've tried your best, haven't you? not do that shall we fun fact after i had given sam all that shit about her horse spooking it was actually my horse that spooked at a pheasant whilst we were trotting towards home which set her horse off oh my god we were bucking the whole way down like we have like a long stretch towards home and Lacey was like bucking and cantering off like she can't up back of carpe and carpe like i've never seen a horse go so far off the floor she like she fucking like leapt like a stag she was like those spanishy horses when um you know when they leap in the air and they're like with their front end and then their back end like kicks out she was like that except there was so much height and she's not like the biggest horse in the world so oh it was so funny and we were like, we're going to have to go home because we couldn't stop laughing. And Sam's got a different saddle on at the moment. It's not like her normal one. So it, it's not the greatest fit. But her saddler has said it will be fine until like, until her one comes back in a little while. Um, but because this one's not the greatest fit, it was like going up her neck and Carpe's like super sensitive. And Oh, what are you doing? Carpe's like super sensitive and... Yeah, so that meant every time the saddle moved, she leapt again, and oh, it was funny. It was funny. Aftermath of the digger as well. So there was a bulldozer there too, and they bulldozed a power cable. So our yard had no power for most of the day, so our, like, electric gate to come into the farm was, like, stuck open. So not only did they disrupt my ride, because Finley is, like, really spooky, and he was just visibly stressed so I was like I'm just gonna have to walk him off around the yard in hand or something but oh my god we had no power can you believe that I was really disappointed I was like sat in the office eating my pasty um, and um the music just went off because we always have like spe we have speakers like around the yard so we have the music on a lot yeah and the music and all the lights just switched off and I was like what the heck and then I realized like our little phone thing for the gate like to open the gates that like the screen on that had gone and then I opened the fridge and I was like oh <laughs> and then I went out as Tim went out and then we went to check the fuse box in the tack room but there was nothing wrong with it and then it turned out they had bulldozed a power line like what the fuck why 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 Everything about that is just so inconvenient. <coughs> Beautiful. I hope that it was acceptable and that someone watched it other than my mum. Suck mum. Not that my mum will probably even watch this. I'll be like, watch this. And she will, it will just, it will go over her head. She'll just be sat there like, <coughs> Thanks for watching this. If you did, I hope you gained something from it, whether it was just, wow, even if you gained boredom, you gave me a view, so whatever. But, yeah, bye-bye. <coughs> <laughs>